Tschüss. Would yes. you like to say something in German first? And uh, I say think I just said something in German. Okay. I'm not sure. But yes. Um, I, yeah. Good morning. Good morning. We'll talk some more, and then I'll try to throw some German in there. And I'm going to start with the first question, if, if that's okay. Yes. Uh, Bruce, there's a very nice line in the movie, call, uh, and it basically says, uh, with age comes a certain perspective in life. Mm -hmm. Taking that sentence and focusing on the movie, what was the perspective and the initial spark that made you say yes to Red? When I, uh, when I first read the script of Red, I liked it. It was an interesting story. Uh, the only other person that was attached to it was uh, Carl Urban, was the guy who plays the, the bad CIA guy. And then this very unique novel thing happened that uh, a lot of movie stars signed up to do the film. Uh, it really became about that. The film really became about how many uh, big name actors uh, got in the film and, and wanted to work on the film and um, that really drove the drove the story. Uh, what was the second part of your question? No, that was the, the perfect answer to the question that I had basically. No, the initial spark wait, that something? basically No no I, I quote? quoted a line from the movie saying uh, with age comes a certain perspective in life. Uh, yes and and everyone that uh, all these actors who signed up for the film all had their own perspective and all were old enough to have a perspective. I think everybody here knows younger kids that haven't quite formed their, uh, their perspective yet. So it was good to work with a group of people that had perspective. So what was the vibe like? I mean, Helen Mirren, Morgan Freeman, who, who you've worked with before and all the others? It was just fun. It, everybody was kind of fans of, of each other, so it was really exciting for me. and. Uh, uh, exciting to work with Helen Mirren and, 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 and Richard Dreyfuss and Ernest Borgnine and uh, all the actors that I got to work with. Cool. Thank you very much. First question, gentleman right there. Second row. Excuse me, technical question. Could you possibly put Mr. Willis's microphone on the other side of the jacket because yeah. the sound quality is like... <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's way better. <laughs> I will do that. while I have this microphone up though, what I will do is tell you that I thought I was going to be sitting behind one of those tables with the curtain in the front. I would have worn different socks if I'd have known that. Uh, <laughs> but I got dressed in I got you want my socks? <laughs> you can change socks if you That's want. very nice of you. That's very nice of you. How often do you get that offer? I'll stay with these. But uh I just saw him and I went, whoa. Yeah. But yeah, how, how about that? that? Would be great. Any better? I hope so. Thank you how very much. How about if much. I do this? Yeah, yeah I got it. I got it. <laughs> and, uh, I'll and, see uh, what I can do. Or uh, I'll speak up. The question, uh, the question would be, um, uh, did you for yourself ever felt like uh, maybe retired but extremely dangerous? Did I feel if retiring is extremely dangerous? Or uh, retired, if you felt yourself like retired but extremely dangerous? No. <laughs> Not yet. Um, I don't, I think they cast the wrong guy. Don't you think they needed a guy that was actually just hold it? Or maybe I could get that microphone. Yeah, we're going to get a microphone uh, for but you. But maybe it was. How about this one? It's oh. going to make it easier. Thank you. Thank you. Hey, welcome to Las Vegas. <laughs> no, I think it, wait, give, give, him, give him a second. The technician is in the back. He's going to do it. Yeah. Hey. hey. Yes. Okay, perfect. Thank Las you. Las Vegas. I'm sorry. Let's start, all, let's start over. What, what's the question? No, no, your question, sir. My question just was, um, according to the, to the title of the movie, if you felt for yourself ever in your life um, retired but extremely dangerous? No, um, I, I am extremely not dangerous. Um,
but it's a cool title for a film. It's an interesting title. When we when we first started making this film, they didn't have that the the explanation of the title. It was just called Red. Red. So that's what I would tell people. Uh, but I don't certainly don't feel ready to retire. Uh, don't feel ready to retire. Okay, next question, gentleman right here in the first row, and then we're moving on to the right. But, um, hi, um, hi, I'm Marcus. Uh, Marcus, hi. <laughs> but, but how What's that, man? <laughs> Where'd you go to school? Berlin. Okay. Berlin, yeah. yeah. Anybody out there you want to say hi to? Hey. Okay. <laughs> how do you feel uh, having a job you, you, you're not forced to, to retire? You could do the job t till the end, or? I feel really lucky. I think that I think you're exactly right. I think actors get a break that not many people in the world get, uh, and that is you get to work past your past the time you're 65. Do they have that law here that if you're 65, you have to retire from your jobs? Well, 67. 67. The problem is they that they've made human beings, they've given human beings the ability to live longer than that and be functional way past 67. So they're going to have to change the rules or something uh, because there are a lot more people that, that do feel that it's unfair to be, to be bumped out of, a, out of a job, you know, simply because of your age. But I'm lucky. I'm going to be working until it's just a bag of bones and <laughs> I'll talk like this. Rolling, <laughs> and, and I'll just do one little thing. I'll fire one last bullet. Is what I'll do, and that'll be the that'll be the end of it. Die hard, two hundred and twelve. <laughs> right. Bruce, oh, yeah, on this side to the right. Sock guy again. Socks, socks. What's up, socks? What's up, dude? Well, my question is: uh, in the movie, Frank and um, Sarah, they got their first date. We mm -hmm. can call it date. And really terrible. Do you remember a terrible first date in your life? D did you have like a really bad first date in your life? Can you tell me about it? I will tell you every detail. <laughs> right now, please. Later. Okay, so my question is if no, you can... But I, I will okay. tell you about it. Yes, of course. I, I don't know if it was a first date, but I've had, had bad dates. Yes. How many? I don't know. And what was the baddest thing ever More than one. in a date? Like something happened, or realizing that you don't have something to, that you don't have anything to say to the person sitting across from you. You didn't have anything to say in a date. Nothing. Nice. Bruce Willis was like. Oh. Even Bruce Willis. Really? Can you imagine. You know. So, um, okay. if you can plan, sorry, a perfect date, what would you do? What would you plan for a perfect first date? Going to the movies. No cameras. No cameras. <laughs> so we meet afterwards. First date after that, you and me, like having me and you go on a date. Probably. <laughs> and our socks. Doubtful. <laughs> Doubtful. Okay, thank you. Let's thank move you. on to the next gentleman over there in the back, fourth row. Hi, hi. hi. I'm Stefan. Hi, Bruce. Nice to meet you. I have a, I have a uh, two-word review of the movie. Pardon my French. Um, fuck yeah. I really, really enjoyed, uh, uh, enjoyed it. I think it's it's awesome. And I, I, I was thinking, uh, with the cast and and the script that lured you to the project, but do you remember your fuck yeah moment on the, on that show where you thought like yeah we have it? Yes, I, I uh, as I said earlier, I think I I signed up for the film uh, long before any of the other uh, big actors got involved with it. Uh, it was. Uh, was brought to me by by the producer uh, Lorenzo de Bonaventura, and we had talked about it for about a year. And the studio was trying to decide uh, um, whether they uh, whether they were going to make it or not. And once they did, uh, that was when the, the uh, avalanche of movie stars showed up. Uh, but that was a fuck yeah moment. The idea of being able to work with uh, Mary Louise Parker and Carl Urban and Ernest Borgnine and Richard Dreyfuss and Morgan Freeman and John Malkovich and Mary Louise Parker and Julian McMahon and Brian Cox and Helen Mirren 
and Rebecca Pigeon, and I think that's it. I'm sure there's someone I left out of that list, but yeah, it became about the actors in it and how much fun that was. James Remar. I'll just shout him out. I'll just blurt names out. Fuck yeah. Is it okay if we cuss on your radio show? Yes, yes. yes. Hi. Question from the lady. Hello, here. my name is Frauke from Radio Berlin. Hi. How was it, I, I know you, you uh, we all know you may uh, speak German a little bit. How was it to uh, work with a German director? Did he talk German to you, to you, to him, or was, maybe you can. Sometimes, just really, uh, just conversational stuff, like how you doing today, and it was a, there was a lot to do on that film, and we mostly talked about the work, and the biggest question I, uh, had for him every day and I think all the actors had because we shot it out of sequence was what the fuck are we doing today what, what are we what are we doing today and he's very organized and, and, and uh, Robert Schwenke is a, a, is a very good storyteller and uh, have you heard about the film it's doing really well in the states it just opened last weekend so I think he did a really good job with it so there are special German virtues you could figure out with that German director? He has a very ordered sense of mind. He had a lot to keep in his head and he, he got it all done. Uh, yeah, it, it, some, uh, some of the actors also spoke German with him, but um, not every day. I need to come here and shoot a film and then I'll speak German every day and be forced to speak German every day. Bruce, it's, yes. a, it's another um, graphic no novel adaptation that you've been a part of. What's so special about these kind of stories that you dig <coughs> and that you like? It's, uh, there, there seem to be a lot more graphic novels. I didn't know that they even uh, existed uh, 10 years ago. Um, they show up with their own sense of uh, of drama or melodrama. In this case, Red was uh, represented the first act of the film. Uh, and then the, the guy who, who wrote it, uh, Warren, <clears throat> Warren Ellis, um, needed someone to fill that in and uh, um, fill that story in. And, he, and there really wasn't much um, of what the film ultimately turned out, out to be in the original graphic novel. It was. Um, I mean, the, the, the graphic novel has 66 pages, and this is a almost two, uh, two hour movie. So, um, what was added, and um, how was it done? I mean, w would you say that it stayed true to the storyline, or has it, you know, become more of a dramedy comedy thing? No, I think it stayed true to the to the first act of the story, and that is about a guy, a, a guy that is an ex CIA guy who is retired, and uh, someone is trying to kill him, and uh, he takes exception with that, and now he's going to go and find the guys who tried to kill him. Uh, that's about as far as that story went. So, um, yes, a lot of it had to be filled in, and and really, it, it's. It's it's the interpretation of of someone's sixty seven pages to to you know show a film that's almost two hours long. Uh, so yeah, and then we got all those all those other actors. So it was really a lot to a lot to do. Talking about the vibe, because you said it earlier, that it was great to have all these other actors on the project. Um, was there a lot of you know? ad-libbing or something that basically became fun and that you added to your role or to a certain scene that you really enjoyed? I think all actors uh, change the words sometimes to make them fit in their mouths so it sounds like you're speaking slang. Uh, but we didn't, uh, while we didn't change much of the story, we didn't change any of the elements of the story, uh, Yes, that, that goes on all the time, that, uh, that you would drop a couple words or add a couple words just to make it sound cool, because that's all we're trying to do, really, is just trying to, trying to be cool in these chairs up here. With the socks. <laughs> these fucking socks. 
No, I think they look cool. Thank you. And they're That's red. Good. I mean, they're yeah, matching well, the... Well, there you go. That's see. why I wore them. They're red. Um, Bruce, one other thing, because, I mean, there are yes. a couple of really amazing scenes in it. My favorite is the one where you basically do the 360, get out of the car, and start shooting straight away. Yeah. And the other one is the fight with Carl. Mm. Um, how was that stage? I mean, how long did that take to actually do the, the fighting sequence with Carl, and um, how much, you know, did you get worked up for doing it? Uh, Carl and I worked on that. Uh, we trained for it for, um, well, we, uh, we both on our own trained for it for a couple months just to get strong enough so you don't get hurt. Uh, we worked on the fight itself, on the choreography for, uh, for two weeks, and it took about nine days to shoot. The main thing is that you have to work the next day and maybe do another scene, so you have to do it so it looks real. And is that for me? Yeah. And uh, no. Well, someone is calling about these socks. Call the socks. Where can you get these socks? <laughs> J. Crew. <laughs> no, the fight. But scene. the fight scene was. Uh, they kept saying, well, you know, we're going to cut it down, we're going to cut it down, we're not going to, it's not a really, it, this film is not about action and fighting. And then they went back and put some more of it in. But contact was made. I mean, we tried to be as safe as we could, but uh, we did kind of avoid beat it. each other up a little bit. Uh, but I, I like the scene. It, it's a good fight scene. Um, what was your other question? Was other no, that, that was the question that I had. And the other one was basically about the 360 in the car when you get out. I'm very proud shooting. of that scene. It's a scene that has never been in a film before. It's never been done. It's, a, it's something that when we were rehearsing the film, I, uh, I said, wouldn't it be cool if I just, while the car is still spinning, just step out of the car and start firing the gun? And the stunt guys all got up and said, we can't do that because you won't be safe. And they ended up being able to do it with uh, uh, digital filming. So it does look cool. But uh, I don't think I was ever in any danger. You do look cool. Looks Question. Cool. Over there. Yes. And then... Hi. Um, all cool sequences, great. The the fight with Carl Urban and, 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 and the car thing. Uh, two of my favorite uh, scenes were the one with Ernest Borgnine. Because I thought... He's not retired, but something else. And um, where did you find him? It's awesome to, to see him on the big screen. And, and uh, how was it? It was great. It was really amazing. Uh, I, I grew up watching Ernest Borgnine in, in films and on, on television. And uh, he's just great. I mean, he's just like he looks on film. And he really is 93 years old. And they had led us to believe that you know, we have to go fast because we have to finish Mr. Borgnine by a certain point. But he was he was ready to shoot all day. He does other films still. He still works. And he lives in Los Angeles. And if you have a film for him, I'm sure he would, he'd, be, he'd like to hear from you. But he's a really sweet guy. We just sat around and, you know, just shot the shit all day long about uh, Marty and, and From Here to Eternity and films like that. Another question from the gentleman over here. Hi. Bruce, my Hi. name is Peter from ZDF. Um, there Hi. are a lot of international movie stars that are shooting right now here in Berlin. Would you consider filming in Berlin once, and what kind of movie could that be? Uh, I would most definitely consider filming here. I, I, I've said it a lot. Every time I come here, I say I, I want to work here. Uh, it's, a, it's a great city, and it's a great look and a great city to shoot in. It doesn't really matter to me what it is, uh, but uh, yes, I would work here. So I am uh, I am available for work in in Berlin. in Berlin. Lady here in the front row. Um, <laughs> thank you. Um, when you play in a movie, it's every time you play another role, and it's like customized and. In two weeks is Halloween. Do you um, have a craziest Halloween dress? Or do you remember the craziest ha Halloween dress you ever seen? I, I can't remember much. <laughs> but 
for about 10 years, I had the same Halloween costume every year. And what was Want to hear it? I had a little, um, little military hat on, and I put a Band-Aid over my eye, and that was it. Okay. <laughs> well. Question over there from the gentleman Word. over there in the corner. Yes. Hi, it's Martin from DPA, Deutsche Presseagentur. Um, first of all, I, I like your haircut. That's uh, pretty cool. Um, You're welcome. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Well, my question is, uh, we heard some uh, German words from you. I would love to hear you speaking uh, Chinese again. Yeah, good luck. <laughs> I just learned that phrase for the, for the film. I don't speak Chinese. What a pity. Thanks. It is a pity. Uh, I was talking to my, to my youngest daughter, who was 16 years old, uh, and she was complaining about her hair because she has really long hair and how long it takes to wash and everything. And I said, if you just cut your hair like mine, then uh, you'll be done in, in five minutes. And you can go out and do what you want to do. And you have so much extra time in your life. Uh, no one really knows why, uh, why some men lose their hair. Uh, and no one can explain it. Uh, but maybe what it, what it really means is that we have other more important things to do than to worry about our hairstyle. And worry about. And we save so much money. So Thank you. Much money, so much money. <laughs> okay, so the much. last two questions for today. Gentleman right here, and then gentleman over here in the second row, please. Hello, Bruce. Patrick from Spree Radio. Hey. Um, you've worked with Morgan Freeman now, and Helen Mirren, Samuel L. Jackson, and numerous of other stars. Is there anybody you'd like to work with in the future? And in what project, if anything, would it be? I don't know what it would be, but I, there are there are a lot of actors that I I, I would still like to work with. Uh, I'd like to work with Daniel Day Lewis. Um, I'd like to work with. Uh, uh, I would work with any of these actors from Red Again. Uh, they're all really great and fun. Um, I'd like to work with Al Pacino. Uh, like to work with Julia Roberts. It's a longer list, but. Okay, last question. Letzte Frage zum Film. Yes. My name is Thomas from Tagesspiegel. Uh, just a short question. Uh, who is your favorite comic hero? And why? I like Superman. I like flying. I don't know if he actually flies or he, his legs are so strong that he could just jump off the ground. I'm pretty sure that's what it was. Uh, but if I had to pick one, yeah, I'd say Superman. Okay. Bruce. Okay. Thank you so much for being here. Meine Damen und Herren, vielen Dank für die Frage. Nächstes Mal versuchen wir das nochmal mit den Telefonen. Um, Have a wonderful day. Red kommt am 28. Oktober in die Kinos und wir freuen uns darauf, wenn Sie reingehen. Danke Ihnen. Tschüss, schönen Tag. Danke für alles. Very nice. Thank you.